Okay, so I've decided to make a new video, the first one for a while, and this will be another video that is not only uploaded to YouTube, but will be shared on my Facebook writing page. If you are watching on YouTube, thank you very much for checking this out. Do feel free to subscribe or leave a comment, whatever you see fit. Today, something a little bit different. I am going to be showing you the poetry books I own. Um, chances are you won't know this unless you do follow my Facebook writing page. Uh, but I am a writer, an aspiring writer. And I have been writing predominantly poetry since about 2011. It plays a big part in my life. I have a poetry page. If you are watching on YouTube, there'll be a link in the description to that. I also have a blog, although that's more random bits and pieces rather than original writing these days. Uh, but yes, poetry, big part of my life. About 600, 700, 800 poems I've written over the past six or so years. And uh, I have a degree in creative writing. I'm currently working on a Master of Fine Arts degree from home, uh, specialising in poetry. And like I said, I upload almost all of my poetry onto the web. And uh, I own quite a few poetry books, of course. And today I'm going to talk about them. Now, I'm filming this all in one go. I'm probably going to stumble over my words and make mistakes, but let's just see how it goes. I've taken them all off my shelf. They're in alphabetical order apart from the last few because those ones are not on my shelves yet. And of course, if there's a poet I mentioned that you enjoy, let me know. Or if there are any poets you think I should be checking out, let me know. There's quite a lot of books. I am going to have to keep getting up and sitting down. Like I said, we'll just see how this goes. So, first up is a writer um, who I own three books um, that they've done. That was a <laughs> well-constructed sentence there. Uh, it's Kim Adonizio, um, who is an American writer. I think she's probably in her 60s now. And, uh, yeah, I own three of her books. The story is, I was at university years ago and read one of her poems out in class, What Do Women Want? I think I read it out twice, once in the first year and once in the third year, maybe. Nevertheless, I liked it, remembered the author's name, the writer's name, and at some point a few years ago decided to get a hold of one of her books, and I do not regret it one bit. Uh, the books are Lucifer at the Starlight, and uh, her poems are very honest, very raw, uh, mainly talking about her life. And um, one of these books, a lot of the poems deal with encounters with men, usually not great or pleasant encounters with men. But anyway, yes, Lucifer at the Starlight. This was published in 2009 by W.W. W. Norton and Company. I also have uh, Tell Me. This is the front cover of Tell Me. Uh, this is published by BOA Editions, or BOA Editions. It came out in 2000. And the writing here is really good. I mean, just uh, great vocabulary, uh, great description. The poems flow really well. Fabulous writer. And then this one, which is a little bit longer. What is this thing called love? And this is also by W.W. Norton and Co. Poems in these three books, well, it's very hard to pick one that I enjoy the most, but you've got poems such as There Seems No Way To Get At It, The First Line Is The Deepest, You With The Crack Running Through You, uh, there's a poem in here called Missing Boy Blues, This Poem Wants To Be A Rock And Roll Song So Bad, and there's a poem in here called Night of the Living, Night of the Dead, beginning with his body and ending in a small town, blah, blah, blah. One poem that does stand out to me is called Blue Door, and it's in this book. So that's Kim Adonizio, really, really great writer. The next person I'm going to mention is Simon Armitage. This is published by Faber and Faber. Most of their poetry books, in fact, almost all of them, have this sort of block colour on the background. Simon Armitage is a northern English poet. Must be in his 50s now, maybe late 40s. He is probably the best poet alive in Britain today, my opinion. His work is a big influence on me. Um, 
just fantastic. Uh, very playful, very colloquial, I guess. You know, he's writing about uh, not not so often deep topics, I would say. Um, there is a sort of cheekiness and a playfulness to some of his work. Uh, poems include, in this collection, Man with a Golf Ball Heart, uh, Zoom, which is one of his more famous works, Abstracting Electricity, and so on. This book is sort of a little bit outdated, though. More on that in a little while. I am conscious that, that this video might be quite, uh, quite long. And I should say that this... Selected Poems by Simon Armitage, he was born in 1963, if you're wondering, came out in 2001. Next is my old university lecturer, Charles Bennett. Um, first up, How to Make a Woman Out of Water. This is published by Enitharm on Press. Uh, might be a little bit difficult to get a hold of this book. It's quite thin. Um, Charles, you know... Great lecturer, I can't really say any more than that. Used to sit in class and drink tea. Uh, this came out in 2007. Poems include Seven Sixteenths, Nantucket, The Sleepwalker. There are some really good poems in here. I particularly like the last one, Revision, which is about leaving a notebook outside in the rain accidentally and the page is going all wrinkly. And I also have this one published by Oversteps Books. It's called Evenload. And... Um, these poems are to do more with plants and that sort of thing, I guess. Uh, poems include 66 Mill Lane, that's a particularly good one. Penny Royal, Dog's Mercury. Um, and yeah, great language. Again, great choice of words. I'm rubbish at describing poems, which is not good because I'm doing a master's degree in it. But uh, it's the only way that I can say it. Great choice of words. So I have two of his books. Um, next up is Tim Burton, the film director Tim Burton. This is called The Melancholy Death of Oyster Boy and Other Stories. These are quite dark, short, quirky poems with illustrations by Tim Burton. Um, Faber and Faber published it. It came out in 1997. Poems include The Melancholy Death of Oyster Boy, Voodoo Girl, The Pin Cushion Queen, uh... Roy, the toxic boy, so some very bizarre, quirky, gothicy, typically Tim Burton esque poems. Um, I should say that Even Load by Charles Bennett came out in 2013 and he actually signed it for me as well, and I remember him doing that. Next up is a whopper of a book. This is E. E. Cummings, Complete Poems, 1904 to 1962. Edward Estlin Cummings, American. Long Dead. This is a big old thick book. It's not the sort of one that you read from start to finish. Now this has been re-released in Britain since I got this as a Christmas present a few years ago. Um, but obviously back when I was bought it as a Christmas gift, I believe it was the, uh, this was the only edition available of his complete poems. It's published by L Live Right. And it's a whopper of a book. It sort of came out in 1994. E. Cummings' work... Well, it's very difficult to say which one is my favourite. But a lot of them are love poems. And the punctuation's all over the shop. They're crazy. The syntax and the grammar and the punctuation is wacky like you wouldn't believe. If you've never come across his work before, it's quite experimental stuff. But it's really, really, really good stuff. And I highly recommend it. Next up is another whopper of a book. This is Carol Ann Duffy Selected Poems. Carol Ann Duffy is a Scottish poet. She is the Poet Laureate of the United Kingdom, although only for a few more years. And she actually is sort of in charge of the creative writing course at the university I study with, uh, but I've never met her. And her poems, well, they're very difficult to describe, but this is a woman who is an exceptionally good writer. Um... First book came out in 1985. This book came out in 2015. Um, it only has the title of each book that she's released in here. And then, of course, you just have to flick to the necessary poem. Um, but she's an, an, a very, very, very good writer. Obviously, because she's the Poet Laureate, her work is included in 
school anthologies that students look at and everything when they're studying their GCSEs. She's won so many awards. She is the leading British poet. And certainly if you are looking for contemporary British work, this is the woman. This book was published by Picador. Um, next up is a book that's also published by Picador. I got this in Yorkshire a few years ago from a lovely little bookshop that I can't remember the name of. This is edited by Carol Ann Duffy. It's called Shore to Shore Off the Shelf, a celebration of bookshops in verse. Very thin, and these poems are all about bookshops. And it came out uh, in 2016, so I think I bought it just as it came out. Poems include Without Prejudice, In the Drowned Bookshop, Silver Moon, etc. Poets include Gillian Clark, Carol Ann Duffy, Paul Henry, um, Liz Lockhead, Don Patterson, The Girl Who Ate Books is a poem by Jean Sprackland. And there is a poem in here called What Happens Next by Helen Mort, who is my dissertation supervisor at the moment. Great stuff. Next, there's still a lot to go. I hope this video is not too boring. This is a book that I got for free because the library at my secondary school was getting rid of it. It's The Hat by Carol Ann Duffy. It's kids' poetry and very fun, enjoyable, playful poetry as well. Poems include How Many Sailors to Sail a Ship, Boo to a Goose, Mrs. Hamilton's Register, a Stick Insect's Funeral Poem. It's just really playful stuff. And it came out in 2007 and is published by Faber and Faber. Next is a Penguin Classic. It's quite a thick book. It's Selected Poems by Federico Garcia Lorca. Uh, an extremely interesting man. I really would like to discover more of his stuff. He was also a playwright. Um, he was born in 1898 and died in 1936. Nobody knows where his body is. Uh, it was in the midst of the Civil War. So he didn't live to be a grand old age, but he is still regarded as probably the best poet Spain has ever had. That's high praise. And uh, obviously the work is in Spanish. I studied Spanish for many years, but there are English translations. And this book came out in 1995, originally, by the looks of it. Um, it's fantastic. Fantastic. Very. Uh, a lot of the poems are very short, concise, and quite pretty. It's the only word I can, I can really use. Quite pretty... Um, lovely little poems, talking about the landscape quite a bit, um, and what have you. Some of the poems later on are a bit longer. He was also a playwright, not sure if I've mentioned that. Fantastic. And then we have another Penguin classic, modern classic. This is a really famous poem collection. Howl, Kaddish, and other poems by Allen Ginsberg. Allen Ginsberg, American Gay Beard. That's all you need to know. Howl is a massive poem, quite controversial, but so vibrant, so vivid, so visceral and raw and angry as well. It's absolutely fantastic. This came out in 1956 um, originally. Um, yeah, first published 1956. Other poems include Sunflower Sutra, America. That's a great poem. Death to Van Gogh's Ear. Really thin, but this book is an absolute classic and is well worth reading. If you are the slightest bit interested in poetry, you must read Howl at least. Then we have Frida Hughes. Bought this in a bookshop a couple of years ago. This is published by Blood Axe Books. Uh, Frida Hughes is the daughter of Sylvia Plath and Ted Hughes. And this is her most recent book, Alternative Values. She's also a painter, very successful painter. So each poem comes with a painting. And uh, there is Frida Hughes, right there, can't see her too well. This book came out in 2015. Poems include Recipe for Exploding Cat, Love Poem for a Motorbike, and Denial of a Lie. Quite a lot of poems in here. Uh, her writing is not really like her mother or her father's, but it's still as powerful and it's still as good. Then, and I was very lucky to get this book, I really must say, then we have another brick of a book, and talking of Hughes, this is Ted Hughes, 
There he is. This is his collected poems by Faber and Faber. Um, it's just a mammoth, mammoth book. This is a man who was a master of the English language. He was poet laureate. He was born in Yorkshire. Uh, quite a distinct accent. He was married to Sylvia Plath. Um, and he wrote a lot about animals and the landscape. Very raw. Um, I keep using that word, but it's completely true. Very raw sort of dirty, grimy, gritty, that's the word I'm looking for, gritty poetry. Um, Birthday Letters, his last collection, very different, sort of addressing uh, the relationship he had with Sylvia, but every other poem is sort of pretty much about animals and the landscape, because he sort of spent a lot of time on a farm when he was a kid. Fantastic. Really, 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 really good stuff, and it's very difficult to pick a poem of his that I like the most. A lot of people gravitate towards a collection he did called Crow. Anyway, moving on. This is a kid's poetry book that I've had for years. Actually, no, I haven't had it for years. But I must have read it when I was a kid. It's by Colin McNaughton, who's done a lot of stuff for, for children uh, in British writing. There's an awful lot of weirdos in our neighbourhood. A book of rather silly verse and pictures. This is published by Walker Books. It came out in 1987. And, uh, oh man, Monday's Child is Red and Spotty. How Many Stars, The Human Siren, Absurd Bird Words. It's just a silly but fun book. And I think it's very important to read poetry to children. I don't think schools study it enough. Next up is an anthology that I'm in. The University of Northampton published this book, Red Kite. It contains dissertation work from final year students doing the creative writing degree um, several years ago and my work is in here alongside the work of various other people it's not just poetry in this book I think you can still get this and I do think the University of Northampton have published further editions of Red Kite every year containing the work of current dissertation students um, I wrote my dissertation on Sylvia Plath and Ted Hughes, sort of, long story. Um, if it is still available on Amazon or wherever, feel free to buy a copy because you would be supporting myself, uh, students at the time that I still know, and the university, of course. There it is. Next up, a more familiar name, perhaps, William Shakespeare, bought this book in a second-hand shop in Yorkshire a couple of years ago. This is published by Everyman's Poetry, yes, and was originally released in 1996. It's just a bunch of Shakespeare's sonnets. I don't really need to say too much about Shakespeare. Everybody's heard of him. Super duper famous, still studied today, and most of the words that he used are commonplace these days. Fantastic. Um, I should say the Red Kite came out in 2014, yeah, and uh, the Ted Hughes brick of a book, I think first, 2003 that first came out. Next up, what a great, great poet I'm going to talk about now. This is Kate Tempest, Hold Your Own, published by Picador. Um, the poems here, a tale of youth and experience, sex and love, wealth and poverty, community and alienation. Uh, weaving elements of classic, cla fa 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 classical myth, autobiography and social commentary. Kate Tempest is only about 30 years old. She's from London. She is a spoken word artist, a musician. She's been nominated for awards for music and poetry. She's won plenty of stuff. She's really still an up-and-coming and underrated writer. This book is absolutely fantastic. Poems include... I was so much older then, I'm younger than that now. Age is a pervert, youth is a fascist. Morning after opening night. Fantastic, very accessible poetry. Well worth a read. Came out in 2014. Next up is her other book. This is one long sprawling poem about a group of people who come together during a storm. It's also an album, Let Them Eat Chaos, by Kate Tempest. And this was published in 2016. And she has a new poetry book coming out in two months, I think, because I pre-ordered it. Next up is a book that I think I got from a 
boot sale. This is Every Man's Library Pocket Poets Love Poems. So there's poems in here by Emily Dickinson, William Shakespeare, Lord Byron, Walt Whitman, John Donne, uh, Christina Rossetti, blah, blah, blah. 1993, the year I was born, is when this book came out. Then, a really old book that my mother must have bought from a charity shop. This is published by... Uh, oh, it's a very old book. It's published by Harrop, and it's a, a collection of poems by a few different writers, um, mainly aimed at students, this book. It's called A Choice of Poets. This is surely out of print. It doesn't even have a barcode on the back. Uh, the poets are Alfred Tennyson, Thomas Hardy, Edward Thomas, William Blake, William Wordsworth, classic writers that I suppose, way back when, students were studying much more frequently than they do these days. Then we have another anthology which I've had for years. It's called A Pot of Gold. Uh, this is published by Doubleday. Jill Bennett um, sort of put it all together. Um, I've had this book for years. It first came out in 1989. There's poems in here by ooh, Langston Hughes, Ted Hughes, Spike Milligan, uh, Edward Thomas, um, and so on. My sister had a copy of this as well, but this is my copy, I believe. Then we have another anthology. I, I did tell you it would be a long video. Michael Rosen put this together. It's called A World of Poetry, published by Kingfisher. First came out in 1994. Just poets um, from across the globe in that one. Then we have another anthology. Bought this from a shop in London several years ago. It's another Every Man's Library Pocket Poets book, Beat Poets. Um, this came out in... 2002, Gregory Corso's in here, Jack Kerouac, Lawrence Ferlinghetti, who is still alive, nearly about 100 years old, Frank O'Hara, really great writer, Gary Snyder, and so on. The Beat Generation, of course. Well, it's better for you to look it up rather than me explain, because this video is really long. Another anthology, Best Loved Poems. This is published by Little Brown. 2000, 2000 is when this book came out. Uh, William Blake, Louis McNeese, Will uh, William Blake again, E. E. Cummings, uh, Lord Byron, Ogden Nash, Emily Dickinson, Rudyard Kipling, so on. Really famous poems in this book. Another anthology, you better believe it, The New Poetry. This is published by Bloodaxe and contains poems from a whole bunch of new poets at the time. This book came out in 1993. Poets include Kit Wright, Liz Lockhead, Sean O'Brien, Grace Nichols, Carol Ann Duffy, Robert Crawford, Simon Armitage, and Jackie Kay, to name just a few. Then we have another anthology, Poems on the Underground. For those of you that don't know whether it's still the case, you can go on the London Underground and they have poems on the uh, trains, um, in the carriages. It's quite a nicely presented little book and there are poets in here including Gerard Manley Hopkins, uh, Langston Hughes, Oscar Wilde, Elizabeth Bishop and so on. It's published by Penguin Random House and came out in ooh, 2012. Then we have another anthology. This is one of the very first poetry books that I bought for university. The Blood Act Blood Axe Book of 20th Century Poetry, published by Blood Axe. It came out in 2000. Poets include Thomas Hardy, W.B. Yeats, D.H. Lawrence, Robert Graves, Norman McCaig, W.H. Auden, Jeffrey Hill, Philip Larkin, more on him in a minute, Paul Durkin, Paul Muldoon, and Joe Shapcott, to name but a few. We're still not done. There's a lot more to go. Next up is the Harville Book of 20th Century Poetry in English, which I haven't actually looked at yet, although I've had for ages. I think this is the book that I'm going to need for my next year of the Master's Degree. Published by the Harville Press, came out in 2000. Every poet you can think of is in this book. There's a list of names on the front that you can't really see. I bought that for about £2. Look at the size of it. Then we have some of these Penguin Little Black Classics, which were 80p each. And I bought all of these pretty much from a place in Chester um, several years ago. So we have number two, Gerard Manley Hopkins as Kingfisher's Catch Fire. Uh, Walt Whitman on the beach at night alone. 
Uh, we have Thomas Hardy, Woman Much Missed. We have Samuel Taylor Coleridge, Well, They Are Gone and Here Must I Remain. Uh, C.P. Cabafy, Remember Body. Uh, Basho, Lips Too Chilled. If I remember, that's haikus, a series of haikus. Uh, Catalus, I Hate and I Love. And Sappho, Come Close. Very sort of sensual, ancient Greek stuff. There you go. Um, and now, the poetry books that I don't have on my shelves at the moment. I will try to be quick. We have Faber and Faber, Sylvia Plath, Collected Poems. My favourite writer, my favourite poet anyway. Favourite poem is The Applicant. Plath uh, killed herself at 30, but this won the Pulitzer Prize for poetry in 1981. She died in 63. Poems include Frog, Autumn, The Rival, Insomniac, The Swarm, Edge, Nick and the Candlestick, and so on. Fantastic. Must, must read that. Um, then we have another favour and favour one. Philip Larkin, very famous British poet. Um, and this is his collected poems. I bought this in a charity shop as well. First came out in 2003. Poems include... Whatever Happened, Talking in Bed, Dockery and Son, This Be the Verse. That's a very famous poem. Fiction and the Reading Public. There we go. And then, Simon Armitage again, his updated selected poems. 1989 to 2014, it's called Paper Aeroplane, published by Faber and Faber. It came out in 2014 um, and just goes up more to the sort of present day. Then we have... My brother bought me this from City Lights Bookshop in San Francisco, a mega famous bookshop, one of the most famous bookshops in the world. It's called Trip Trap, Haiku on the Road by Jack Kerouac, who is my favourite prose writer, Albert Sajo and Lou Welch. And it's a series of rambling, uh, short, fragmented poetry. It's all I can really describe it as. It's published by City Lights and came out, well, it's published by Grey Fox Press. And came out in 1973, by the looks of it. Then we have another anthology. This is Staying Alive, published by Blood Axe. Came out in 2002. Poets include Carol Ann Duffy, Sylvia Plath, John Berryman, Kit Wright, James Wright, Ken Smith, W.D. Snodgrass, James Dickey, Seamus Heaney, uh, uh, Edward Thomas, Anna Akhmatova, and so on. It's a mega anthology. That one, quite a haunting picture on the front. Then we have another book that I'm in. This was published in America. Synesthesia Anthology 2013 to 2017. This is published by, I can't remember the name, Blue Vortex Publishers. It's an online journal. I've had work in the online journal a few times over the years. It's really worth uh, checking it out. Um, I'm sure you can find old editions online. Um, I won't mention any of the other poets in here. It's quite a thin book. My poem, Stagnant, is in here, and I'm very proud to be in it. Then we have a friend's poetry book, very, very thin, published by Vegetarian Alcoholic Press. I am telling you right now, if you can get a hold of this book, buy it. This woman writes so well. It's Rena Meadow. I have been packing this suitcase all my life, so why is it empty? Poems include... Demystification, Tornado Hunting, Your Smile Is My Valhalla, Shops With Lime, really, really thin, but so, so good. And there are paintings in here as well. Check it out. Then we have Savannah Brown, who is, what, 22 now? American, living in Britain, YouTuber, fantastic. I love her videos. Unfortunately, she doesn't really upload too much these days but I can sort of understand why. This is self-published, I believe. Came out in 2017. There are small drawings in here. Very accessible stuff. A lot of these poems written when she was a teenager or younger. Poems include organs. I don't know much about kisses. Clock tick or a time bomb. There we go. Just a few more. I'll be very brief. This is published by Cape Poetry. Sharon Olds. Major American poet. This is called Odes. And each poem is sort of an ode to a particular thing. Uh, there's a poem called Douchebag Ode. Ode to the penis. Ode to the condom. 
Spoon Ode, Ode to Dirt, and so on. I haven't read this book yet because I've only had it for a while. It came out in 2016. I then have another book by Sharon Olds, which I have read and studied, Stag's Leap. This book is poetry on the breakdown of her marriage. Fantastic, fantastic. Poems include While He Told Me, Approaching Godfab, Maritime, Left Wife Bop, and it came out in 2012. Quite long, but very powerful stuff. And that's published by Cape Poetry as well. Then we have Gene Sprackland, Tilt, also published by Cape Poetry. These are quite um, earthy, um, again, raw poems. Pretty good book. Poems include Birthday Poem, A Phone Off the Hook, Hijacked, Dried Fish. And it came out in 2007. I got this second hand, but it is signed, as you can see. Then... Two more. Lisberry, Black Country. Black Country is an area not far from Birmingham. Um, this is a fantastic little collection, written in quite a northern dialogue, some of dialogue, dialect, some of the poems. Came out in 2014. Poems include The Red Shoes, The Silver Birch, Woodkeeper, The Assumption, and so on. That's published by Chateau Poetry. And then another favourite and favourite one, Emily Berry, Stranger Baby. Uh, this came out in 2017. Poems include New Project, Freud's Beautiful Things, The Forms of Resistance, Ghost Dance. Quite experimental in a way in terms of structure. Um, very ambitious stuff and it's sort of a book that deals with childhood loss. And there it is. What a lengthy video. Let me know your thoughts. I do apologise for the length of this. Um, but there we go. Those are all my poetry books. And if the quality of this video hasn't been great, apologies there. But yes, let me know your thoughts. And until next time, bye for now.